Hello and thank you for joining us on the Monday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubakum. Today on the program, Kaduna Bandits released 28 Baptist school students after ransom payments hold back 87 others as Emir of Mori issues 30-day ultimatum to criminal headsmen to vacate Taraba Forest and later on the show, Asu threatens to resume strike over federal government failure to implement agreements. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju and Gani Kayode Balogun. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. It was an emotional scene in Kaduna State when bandits released 28 students abducted from Bethel Baptist College in Chikun local government area of Kaduna State. And the parents received their children with tears of joy after they were freed on Saturday night, having spent 21 days in the den of their abductors. But for parents and guidance of the remaining 87 children, still in captivity their sleepless nights continue meanwhile the emir of mori empire in taraba state alaji abasta feeder has issued a 30-day ultimatum to criminal headsmen to vacate forest within the state or be forced to do so this followed rising cases of kidnapping killings and attacks in the states by criminals others let's share the story with you of the release of the student first it is a thing of joy because uh, we've been crying about these children but today at least 28 of them are home you could see how the parents were celebrating embracing them i could hear also hide my joy in the presence of the children uh, but we still have more of them there so we will continue to put pressure to speak out to pray until what is expected to be done. The government of Nigeria have a new press now. They say, they speak to them in the language they understand. So we're also going to speak to the government in the language they understand and to all our children. Around. Tell us, how has been your experience since the, uh, the weeks and months the children have been? Truly, it has been a very terrible experience. You can't believe that every night you will not sleep. You don't even have time. You get call from this parent. You get call from that parent. Parents will come to this school, but after all the conversation there with the president of the Baptist, they will still call us. They believe we have the magic to do, but we really don't. The best we can do is to pray for them, encourage them, and then speak out to government. But we are happy that at least today, the bandits, bandits release these children for us. And I want to appeal to the bandits and those who are responsible about this. Please, these innocent children don't know anything. Don't put them in this. Putting these children in this kind of terrible situation would make them hard in the future. If we want to raise godly leaders, we have to be careful what we are doing to our children. Look at that small boy. How could that small boy experience that kind of pain at this age? It's not good for the future of Nigeria. It's not good. Our leaders must watch out. What we are allowing these children to go through today will not be safe for us. So tell us, how many, how many of the students have been released? So far, we've, we can confirm 35. Yes, 35. We can confirm. Uh, then around 81, 87, I'm not sure exactly. Are still with the body. Are you in the position to tell us the ages of this? Uh, yes, uh, there are children with the age of 10. The highest is 19. I can even send their names and ages and classes to you if you need. Now we'll continue because the children are not here all back. So our prayer will not stop, our prayer will not stop, our cry will not stop until when we have all these children back. And not only these children, until when everything will kidnap in Canada. And that's what the church in Canada will do. We will not stop talking, we will not stop putting pressure on Canada. Nothing stops the crime, the evil stop in Canada. People are supposed to go out and have a free time to do their own business. You can imagine what's going to follow the outcome of this kidnap, the education, the psychology, the trauma of these children. So it is something bigger than just a mere their release. There are, better, there are more things that will follow. So we will continue to speak and pray until this evil stop in our country. Students that their children are not yet back are still waiting. Okay. Most of the children that have returned have been taken to the hospitals in very weak conditions. 28 um, school children released, uh, 87 to go. Baba Jide, 
and I don't envy those ones um, that are still waiting for their children. I don't envy them. Congratulations to those ones that their children released after 21 yes. terrible, harrowing experience. Honestly, honestly. Um, the Khan chairman in Kaduna State, his son was one of those who escaped. Uh, this set of um, abductees, some of them ran away. Hmm. You know, some of them ran away. Um, sometimes they send them on errands and they just use the opportunity to escape. It's unfortunate that it has now reached the point that government is showing absolutely... Look at that boy's hair, for example. See how unkept? Mm. Look at them. Mm. That's, even if you see your child in this state, in this very, very unwholesome state, you even shed tears because you, you know that you look at his hair. Okay. This now, collapse. For Sighting some of them, people. no, for oh. some of them, their children are not, not back. So it's enough pains for those ones. Those, that's why they are crying that, oh, when will our own? They must have been looking forward to the re receipt of their children. Now to be there and be told that, look, your, your child is not good for any mother. Yes. No mother will. And they have been extorting money. These are people who are struggling, but they can't leave their children. In the about. den of these guys, without doing something about it, so what kind of you come is up this? and say the people should not pay ransom. Who will not pay ransom? Even you that you are making the law. If your child is there, and you truly love that child, you will pay. That is the part. There is nothing. Ah, you. So these guys down there. What is what is of greater value than human life? A child that you sad by yourself. Even an adopted child, you still want to take absolute care of that child. So who is that parent who will simply not be bothered and not want to do whatever it takes to get his child out of uh, uh, captivity? It is not the fault of the children. Look at the way they are looking. What they were it's, wearing the day they were captured. Yes. The school uniform. It's the same dress. 21 days ago. Yes, in the bush. Beaten by mosquitoes, you know, and all that. It's now, it's now looking like it's a normal thing for people to be kidnapped. Especially this Kaduna state that has become something else. Bandits are running riot in that state. And we appear to be powerless. I was saying it yesterday, how can bandits get as, get as close as uh, Marabanjos? It's like they've entered Kaduna now. Because you can trek. From that place, how far is Marabanjos to the to the old uh, toll gate there of Kaduna? This is what this is what we face. Look at these children. They look these children will never recover from this. <laughs> that they will keep remembering. Look at just look days. at that boy looking blank. You know that what that means? Living like animals. That boy is just looking blank. You know what it means. We have a situation now that children as young as 17, they don't want to stay in our country. Yes. They don't want to stay in our yes, country. Yes. Some will say, no, I don't want to school in Nigeria. That's when the they eventually get, now. When they eventually get a chance to go and school abroad, they will say they are not coming back home. I told you the story of my younger sister's son, mm. who was harassed by, by, by uh, SARS. SARS around that uh, uh, Alliance Francaise uh, roundabout. Um, what a Carrington way hmm. because he was going to repair his laptop and these guys cocked their guns at him. He had never seen anything like that. Hmm. And a 10 year old boy, you cocked your gun at him. Since and he's, he he's, had, he's schooling he in it, Canada. He had it, since that time, he had no, he said, No, I'm not coming home. No, I'm not coming home. Even the one who was there, because there were two, the one who was there. It, the moment he had that story, he said nothing like coming home. My sister had to, in December, go and see them with all the COVID uh, restrictions and all that. <laughs> because they were supposed to come home. They're not interested. No, no, no. This is the thing. That is the kind of country that we are breeding. Hmm. GKB, my own concern is that, you know, some people, when you tell them about basic things of life, some things are, you know, they will tell you that, look, my government is there. 
my government can provide this, this, and this, and this for me. And in Nigeria, if the state government cannot do anything, cannot intervene in this situation, the federal government is, you know, I don't, I don't understand. Now, it's now the parents that are now interfacing with the bandits. I was even told that some bandits, they will count money. After counting money, and if they feel that the money is not complete, they will hold the person Who brought it? that brought the ransom. Free reign. So the, these bandits now, they have the infantry of telling the parents now that we'll be releasing them in batches. As we, as we go, we are in dark streets as a country. When people ask what was Somalia like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, this is what Somalia is. Bandits, the terrorists, whatever they want to call them, have carved out fiefdoms for themselves within a state and they rule that state with all impunity. And this has no, the what makes it worse is that this has no ideological bearing. Yeah. It's not because That's they want why to go to, to call them terrorists. It's not, it's not because they want doesn't to doesn't fit the definition mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. terrorism. It's purely to inflict pain in order to make money. It's commercial. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. first law, even in the Nigerian constitution, the only duty, first duty given to the Nigerian government is the security of lives and property. That's the only legitimate thing that you have. After that, you are just like any other usurper. Mm -hmm. Because if you cannot defend and protect your citizens who freely give you their they are filled out through their votes and say, you are the best man for this job, please protect us. You have the mandate to protect them and you fail. That is failure. And it's not, no matter how much people want to grasp that, like you said, no matter how much they say the governor is there, the president is there, if it's the result that matters, my old boss in point will tell you, it's not the effort. Mm. It's the result. Yes. I don't want to know how long it is to, hear to get the story. Mm -hmm. I want mm. the story. That's the bio no Gawe. It's not mm. interested. So it's in not about how many uh, Tukano jets you bought. It's not really about how many new soldiers we are bringing in. What have they done to stop this nonsense? Yeah. And what we are doing, we don't seem to realize, is that we are losing a whole generation of Nigerians mm. who are already shipping out, not physically, mentally, mm. from mm. Nigeria. And that's mm. worse. We already have a, we have a generation now that is still there physically. Mm. Mm. But they've left mentally. Mm, yes. These ones are going to live both physically and mentally. People go to school in Cyprus now. Mm. Go to people just want to get out of Nigeria. No, they people, just want to be out of here. People don't care. The rate, rate of emigration from Nigeria Zaya. has gone up uh, at a geometric rate. Uh, at a rate never seen in our history. Nigeria the rate used to be of the people destination living of people this country. Yeah. Everyone wants to live. And if we hear some of the countries that people want to go to, they don't yeah. care. Oh my God! Remember the story of a whole bank branch mm. that went to Canada. Mm. And no, was... not that they were, not that a whole branch went. <laughs> they were living incrementally, <laughs> living incrementally <laughs> until the, 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 the bank right. realized that ah, everybody in this department is gone. <laughs> now, one of the most profitable banks in Nigeria, <laughs> they have so many of their former Members staff abroad. in Canada. To the point that they opened a yes. WhatsApp group of ex bankers. Of ex, ex, so, 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 bank this staff. Bank, so, so yes. Staff. Highly profitable bank. And they are not underpaid people. No. Mm -hmm. There are Damn. people who earn as much as 1.5 million a month. A month well, who refuse to, to stay here. It's not, security is an issue. It's not even that money. It's mm -hmm. not. And don't uh -huh. forget. I was the, telling you something you remember. You're the health sector. That the sector is a different. Is that uh, one is even a pandemic. Yes, I say people in other sectors who are well paid, young people. Yeah, with few, a bright future. Yes, in believing that no, we can't stay here because of this security. I was telling him about a marriage that I attended in Ibadan, just here, and the bank staff that I met there when we were just, he said, they deliberated for about three months before agreeing to come to Ibadan. Because they, yes, because they knew they had to go by road. They deliberated mm. for about three months. They were telling us, should we go, should we not go? For that wedding? Just a wedding never done here. They didn't want to go. 100 kilometers, so. Yes. Mm. And when I was talking about the uh, uh, staff of the other bank who formed the WhatsApp group. In Canada. Of alumnus of the... Uh, of, that uh, bank. <laughs> of, uh, of alumni <laughs> of that bank. 
they were now telling me that, oh, is it that one? How about our own? Our own now. Do you know how many have left for the same place? Because the Canadians, they have an aging workforce. Mm, they are looking for young people mm. who, to, to freshen up their workforce. And they can see that Nigerians are willing. And they are, and they are at work. One of the greatest assets of our country is our youth budget. Hmm. 70 percent of nigerians are young people mm. that in itself is a strength mm. but the it's, rate it's at which assets. people are living yeah, mm. the rate at which people are living okay let me take you to governor matahali is saying that banditry in the northeast yes, will not consume west. nigeria not west yes. uk is not taking what do you think he had in mind before he made that statement because it is not the problem of the northwest alone hmm. Those of us who come here to complain and demand that the problem in the northwest or northeast should be solved, it's not as if at this time we are directly affected. You understand? Mm. Uh -huh. Even if we are affected, it is in terms of food security because that is a very the northwest is, is, a, is a fantastic agri. Uh, agriculture belt of our country. Mm. Different crops. You grow different crops and all that. Now, mm. if people can't go to farms, are we surprised now that prices of virtually everything has gone up? Even everything, rice. Everything. Even everything. rice. Everything. Rice, according to Punch, the price of rice has gone up by as much as 150%. Uh, percent. So, we're looking for beans, another to come and argue. Beans. Now. Beans. According to Punch, it's not Babaji they wrote it to. Beans, the price has gone up by more than 250%. Our viewers will be very witness. <laughs> Let them go to Punch now. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes, the same thing. Tomatoes too, the price has gone up. It's not Gideo or Gideo's wife who went to market to discover it. Other people too have seen that this is the trend. We'll go. And look at the story that Miriam, our correspondent in Abuja, did. Mm. All of them were talking about security, which is what some people do not want me to talk about. They were saying that the reason these prices have gone up is mm. insecurity. Yes. Did that Abuja story that Miriam did? What some people had terrible salary celebration because yes. of they couldn't afford to they buy ram. And, and, and they had been buying ram all their all, all their years. Mm. But terrible. we are now in such a terrible situation that those. People who sell the ram, they said the places they used to go to, they can't access those places anymore. It's not as if they are not there. But one of them even described going to some of those places as haram. And you know in Islam, when you mention haram, you can define what haram means. You don't, you, you don't dare it. Yes, don't even try it. Because you, you, you pay with your life. So this is the thing. So... We, Nigeria will be affected unless we deal with this uh, situation. Let's not let's stop thinking that, oh, it cannot extend to other parts of the country. Some people thought that Boko Haram was just for the north alone. For the northeast. Or for the northeast. Until it started stretch, uh, stretching to, to other Abuja. parts. Even Abuja. People being killed in Abuja. People being killed in Kano. People being killed in, uh, in Kaduna, Zaria, uh, Suleja. The, all of these places. The northwest, yeah. Yes. So this is the thing. When there is a problem somewhere, we have to address it. Mm. We have to address it so that we limit it to that area. Mm. So Matawale was right in saying that this thing will consume Nigeria because if they continue to have free reign, they will feel comfortable to come to other parts of Nigeria. Why are we I not in I this country where Boko Haram was opening cells in Kogi State? Mm. In Kogi State. In Fafia. Yes, they are opening cells. So there is no... Uh, in fact, one of the one of the most brazen attack on the Nigerian army on the highway was by a Boko Haram faction along uh, Lokoja Abuja Highway. That's yeah. the Ansaru group. And they kill soldiers. Okay, I have Engineer Falabi calling us from Songo, Otao, in Ogun State. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good evening. I greet you. Good evening. And I greet Abadide and uh, Mr. Ganil. Yes, sir. I greet you, sir. Yes. Uh, I, I think... Uh, the current situation about kidnap and the rest in Kaduna is worrisome. Uh, may I request 
that please if you can make it a Nagana issue that we I, I want the 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 forum of discussion to be included with the northerners like Colonel Man. This will be part of you so that the whole nation will know that this is not a Western issue. It's a national issue. Because I am worried. How can we continue to stay in this type of situation whereby the, the, the president or the, the federal government believe that things are going well? It is a worrisome. It's, it's very worrisome. I'm very highly, I'm highly disturbed. Thank you. I Thank, I'm you. Not, I'm not Thank you for your contribution. Mm. He's not a journalist. This is journalist and mm. We can <laughs> get in touch with him. What we can do is we'll, 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 we'll try to get him. We'll do that when it comes to security. Now, students of FGE Beni Yari are still in captivity. What's going on? Well, the, according to the people, obviously the governor is not interested. And we run into trouble now. Who is interested now? Who is interested? Uh, the no. the federal are, government is not interested. The governor is not interested. The local government chairman is not interested. In fact, we that have... That school is a federal school. It's a federal school. And the the unity school now. They are not interested. I think the that United those school. who run Nigeria presently, both at the federal and state levels, have given up, most of them anyway, have, must have given up on trying to solve this problem. Because every no, day... No, it's ransom that they don't want to pay. Uh, because they don't if, want you don't, to pay if you don't negotiate, something must give. No parents, no matter how callous. If you are not ready to negotiate, in my view, you must be ready to... To defend. To, to rescue. Yeah. Rescue, yes. Rescue through military means. Put a plan down. The uh -huh. plan to rescue them, and let's even have one successful one. Yeah, just one kidnapping go hurry will, will give us the boost to move forward. We are in the middle of a war that people are pretending we are not fighting. Because this is no longer just banditry, banditry for the sake of it. Fine, they make pecuniary demands. They are now spreading their works in such a manner that if they are not careful, in the next 24 months, nobody will be able to leave their room without fear of kidnapping. Even now, people are very afraid to send children out. In some parts of Cardinal, it's already like mm. that. So there are places you cannot even go people's out. Homes to kidnap them. We need to be wary of what, where we are going. Failure of governance has shown the fact that either we are not, we are ill-prepared or that there is somebody somewhere who believes that this will simply go away. And I believe that's the thinking of those people in government. That this is a matter that will sooner or later go. It's not going away, it's expanding. It's like cancer. It doesn't go anywhere. Because like I said, it's worse. Because it's not ideology color based. Mm -hmm. It is based on pecuniary needs. Yeah. That means people will see it as free avenue and move it or do it. Let's quickly rush our talking points now. The uh, police officer's wife, you know, they, yeah. they, they have a number. Look at the number of um, their husband that yes. they, they've lost. Than police officers. Than to, Boko Haram. to Boko Haram. Now, the Emir of Mori in Taraba State is now issuing this kind of ultimatum. Yeah. And I look at it and, oh, for the Emir to come out to bust out like that yes. and say that if you don't leave our territory, this kind of ultimatum was the ultimatum that Governor Lua wrote in Akele Dulu gave. No, no, he did not even give ultimatum. Not this ultimatum. It's not uh, uh, registration. Uh, the governor said, come and register to use our forest. The governor never used the kind of words that this Emir has used. Hmm. Yet we saw uh, the kind of like Barubashew take him on. The governor said, We want to know those who are in our forest. Identify you, Mark. register to uh, graze in our forest. That's what he said. And the Mieti Allah members in the state, they were in that meeting. Remember, we interviewed them. Mm. They said there's nothing wrong about it. Mm. But we had people at the federal level making all kinds of noise. People were even saying no, that people can go anywhere but they the like. But the alacrity in which the presidency even reacted. Yes. Now look at an emir who is worried that criminal headsmen are kidnapping his people. He's already tired of the fact that they are paying ransom to criminals that they harbored, that they received warmly. And he's saying, look, let me even quote some of what he said. Directly. Because there are people who have asked me that, ah, when is Garuba Sehu going to talk about this thing? It's As if I'm the one who determines when Garuba Sehu 
who uh, issues who, who react issues or press statement. <laughs> uh, now he said, look at what this man is saying. We will not ask. He said, henceforth, anyone caught conniving with these criminals, we will kill his mother, his father, and brothers. Hmm. That's what he said. And he chose the occasion of the eight prayers to say these things. Then the enemy also said, we will not ask of his name. So when they get to the forest and they see anyone, we will not ask of his name or mission. We will just kill him. There is no way one bastard will inhabit the forest only to keep coming to kidnap us for ransom, rape our women, and kill our people. Hmm. That's what he said. Did uh, Arakuni Akredolu go to this well, extent? He didn't this. go to this extent, and it was like heaven should fall hmm. over the man with the white beard. He didn't go to this extent. He said, register. The Mietiala in you know, the state that, said, that yes. He said, we will kill. They will kill their parents. We will kill, kill their mothers, kill their fathers, and their brothers. And their brothers. And then That's they what will he not, said. They will not he sounded so frustrated. Honestly, to, to, you know, when you look at uh, this thing, it can be really frustrating. Do you know how much people in his kingdom will have paid before the, the emir got angry at this stage he's probably not even thinking of losing the stool do you know how much ransom he will have paid you know, how many da how the eh? amount of damage yes and the damage people. done to you know you rape people's women you kill them they you, know, be found, they and you want back. them to keep quiet and but a lot of these people have said repeatedly are not nigerians let me tell you some of these people that some of our people want to kill themselves over. If you, if you stand in front of them to speak even now, sir, they to them, they will not understand. But mm. if you speak uh, if French, we... they will answer you. All right. So they are not Nigerians. We'll take this, brother. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's too journalist and Please don't go away. Stay with us. So your favorite news and current affairs program, journalist hangout. I have Babaji de Koladeo in the house and Gani Kaidi Balogun. And we are looking at the the student of 28th student of um, Baptist College in Chicago that were just uh, released. And ultimately, when we look at yesterday when we had this program, when um, a former air chief came to Another air officer came to tell us about the hope about this super tornado that came and everything. And um, we are we're quite optimistic that at the end of the day, maybe before the end of this year, we'll be able to at least douse the tension down in the north west. I just hope that while dousing the tension in the north, we don't uh, transport the, pro the problem to other parts of the country. That is to kill them. Mm, because the way. Uh, government react to certain things really gets out of hand. But I'm not only optimistic, I pray very well that they get the job done on time. Because remember, we're already moving to farming. There's this sense of urgency. No, no, it must be urgent because yes. we've lost the whole farming circle. Hmm. And that's the third year in a row caused by this. First was the Northeast. Now, half of the Northwest, according to CBA reports, and they cannot recoup money given to them for farming. Yes, yes, I remember that it was, yes. And so that means even we are losing money they we are giving to, to people farm, they can't farm, to provide so food. So I think we should lose this circle. I guarantee you, we will be back to the pre buari days of importing even beans or whatever is importable. Mm -hmm. Because we are running out of national reserve. Based on the fact that we are not doing But actually, the, uh, this, let's go back to this Emir, you know, the Emir okay. of Lonori, mm -hmm. these angry outbursts, you know, he has made his point and everything, but then that <laughs> people should not take laws into their hands. No, it's no, still no, a lawful I, society. I, I disagree with the way the Emir spoke. He must have been frustrated. Mm. Um, his subjects must have been coming to him to complain and all that, and he felt, look, this had to stop. But you cannot be threatening retaliation. Mm. The courts are there to handle matters like this. And if you know that criminals are hiding in any of the forests in Taraba State, get the law enforcement agents to 
to go and harass them. Although he complained that some people who connive with these people that they, they get bail and they will return to the society. So yeah, here was a man who was truly frustrated because mm. frankly too, if you have a situation in which people are arrested Not for conniving with uh, yes. for, and then they get released, you know it's, it's, it's bad enough. Now the fear of jungle justice is real. Mm. When you speak in this manner, people of your community can just go into those forests and whether uh, it's an innocent person that they met in the forest, they will just begin to kill people. So jungle justice is what uh, we, we oppose. You can't kill every forest-based uh, headsman. You can't because some of them are innocent. You know, uh, I, I, I oppose uh, what he said, uh, honestly, and he, he described what's going on um, as madness. Mm -hmm. He has every reason to be angry. Governor Akere Dolutu was angry when he said, look, you must come and register to use our forest. Because these guys are using this forest to perpetrate kidnapping. When they kidnap people, they take them straight into those forests. I've told you the story of uh, one of my aunties who was kidnapped in Ifejumu in Kogi State. And they ended up at uh, Akoko Edo, passing through the forest of uh, Ondo, Walking. Ajowa, coming out from around the Ajowa. Kim and then they, they walked for nine days. Uh, uh. Yes. So how can anybody pray for these uh, animals uh, who are kidnapping people? You know, I can understand the Emir's frustration, but we can't it's condone not to society. Yes, jungle justice because that is what he's talking about. Okay, I have a caller, Ikale from Wari. Doctor State, I think so. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. How are you guys doing there? Oh, we, we are Very fine. Well. We thank God for his masses. Okay. Thank God for what you are doing. We appreciate it. But yeah. what I want to contribute here is this. The president is the commander-in-chief. Yes. And we respect him so much. We voted for him. We voted for him. With the Lord, we said he will come in to change things in Nigeria. Mm. We voted for South for him because of the Lord. I believe it will change things. I'm talking out of faith because what is happening, nobody is saying anything about it. It's going to envelop every one of us in this country. The zeal they used to arrest Nadi Kanu, they should use that same zeal to go after the bandits. The zeal they used to arrest uh, 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 this man in the uh, Republic. Go. No. Hmm. Okay. Well, you made this point that they should use the same zeal. That's the same thing that um, Buba Galadima said. Buba Galadima said, if you can go to another person's country to pick Nam Dikano, if you can go to another person's country to pick, uh, I mean, Sunday to arrest Sunday Go, why can't you? Sunday was already you, on the database. Why go to the airports? Why can't you arrest <laughs> Turuji? Turuji was the one whose father was uh, uh, arrested and because of the arrest of his father he got kidnapped. angry and he was just kidnapping people in villages. Later, and on, and later on they released his father and he reunited with his father. You that that Turuji is, is not in jail. Dan Kiremi is not in jail. Um, let me, you affect the, my thought flow. Dan Kremi is not in jail. Dan Gote, who is controlling the Gibia area as a bandit, is not in jail. Dogo Gide, who killed Buarindaji and organized the kidnapping of those, um, those uh, government called Kagara boys. Dogo Gide is not in jail. In fact, he had the audacity to be speaking in an audio that I listened to that they should give him 700 million. Who? You know? So that's what Rupa Galadima listed all those bandit leaders. Mm -hmm. That if you can pick people outside of Nigeria, these ones are here. So but why have we not million. gone for them? Why have we not? Because as I always say, we know where they are. It's not that we don't know where they are camps. They have camps. You go to a place like Dansadao in uh, Zafara, there's a big forest there. This, 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 the bandits are there. We know their camps. 
So why can't we go and waste them in their camp? These guys, just like the governor of Kaduna said, they have lost the right to live. Hmm. If you can take other people's lives, children, children. that will take kids, 18 Nigerian soldiers in one day. I keep talking about it. In Shimfida, Gibia local government. Hmm. Nobody has avenged the killing. Hmm. Ultimately, where do we go from here? Well, we sooner or later, like the Emir said, no, we don't agree with him or don't condone what he said. People, at least he is still talking. I'm sure there are people somewhere who said, okay, fine, government has failed. It's time for me to arm myself and defend myself. Hmm. That's where we are trying not to get to. Because hmm. ultimately, that's where we'll get to. Because at least the enemy has the, something to talk out of what they are planning to do. I'm sure there are others somewhere in the north who have made up their mind that you can't die, or you can't be living on your knees. You have to die on your feet. Hmm. And not be living in fear 24 7, hmm. waiting for government to, to repel come. these people. And then nobody is giving you support. So we will take and I, I like bringing, I hate bringing us back, but remember, there was even attempts by some people to arrest bandits, and they were shot. By soldiers. Is it mistaken identity or is it something we don't know? So we are in two troubles now. One, our people are going to start to defend themselves. Government is trying to go to resist that. And then we now create another theater of war between right. vigilantes and the government. Away from insecurity? Now, it is going to be another arrowing academic experience for Nigerian students following planned decision of members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities ASU to embark on fresh strike. ASU has threatened to resume the industrial action. It suspended in December 2020 over a failure of the federal government to honor many of the agreements it signed with the union. The chairman of ASU at the Abaka Tafawa Balewas University, Bochi Ibrahim Inua, said only two out of the eight items in the memoranda of understanding signed by both parties have been addressed. I don't know, Julie. This they signed this memoranda, two out of eight, and these people they were honorable enough to suspend that strike mm. as at December twenty twenty, when you know the, the whole twenty twenty was mad with COVID and um, ASU strike. Mm -hmm. Now, can't the federal government be honorable to their own way to, at least, if you are talking about eight items, yes. at least meet like I will go halfway. halfway. Go halfway. Or five. Yeah. You see, this is why we keep having these strikes. Because there is no honesty. There is no sincerity. Sometimes we even agree with uh, labor leaders to do certain things that we know that we don't have the funds to Limits. implement. Mm -hmm. We just go ahead so that they will end their strike. They won't go on strike. We make promises. But what do you have labor, labor leaders, do you mm -hmm. think that they too are not like reasonable to like this we are going through here. This is not the way it used to be. No, but you can't be talking about um, um, us going through hell. Elsewhere, academics are better paid than lawmakers. Hmm. Be where they take education hmm. seriously, hmm. they are better paid That's than. Angle. Yes, hmm. and today they can see the waste that is going on. The waste that is going on, look at bureaucracy in our country, is just an opportunity to simply pay dead woods, you know. We are carrying too much dead weight. We are, we are reluctant to admit it. Now, there are certain things beyond even the issue of money. Some of these demands have nothing to do with money. They are just demands that can help the university system. For example, you are saying now that, okay, you want to enroll everybody on uh, IP, IPPIS. There is no way that the IPPIS can work in the university setting. The whole culture of the university, uh, university life, you are going to distort it thoroughly if you must. Because as far as they are concerned now, the people in government, you are not supposed to earn salary in more than one place. That's what this that IPPIS, that's what it stipulates. Whereas these guys will go on sabbatical, 
as visiting lecturers. Mm. There are schools in this country that do not have enough lecturers. Mm. And it is through this visiting uh, regime that they can help clear some of the uh, of departments that they don't have professors and everything. But we have mm -hmm. when you have this this uh, uh, visiting this, regime, yes, they can at least go and help Work out in those schools. Experience. I know when they first started uh, uh, this university in uh, Obomosho, I I'll know how some of the uh, lecturers from my school used to go there, you know, as visiting lecturers to help out. Then the whole idea of um, um, sabbatica, we have even academics from foreign countries, they will come to Nigeria on sabbatica. Then Nigeria uh, uh, too, some of the our best lecturers too, will go yes, outside. Yes, now, if we are to go by the, the uh, policies that, this, uh, that the government wants to create, you can't even do that anymore. Hmm. How do you then do thorough research? If you are just stuck where you are, because this is what they are trying to promote. You are now have a situation in which in the, within the university system, you can't even hire an ordinary cleaner without resorting to Federal Character Commission, without uh, uh, going to oh, Accountant yes. General's office, you know? And all, all of that, these things were not happening before. There ought to be exemptions. Hmm. And this, um, they are saying this IPPIS because to even hire people, you know, you have it has to be captured in the budget and all that. These are the things that were not there that they are trying to bring. And they are saying, look, in the university system, the idea of sabbatical, the idea of uh, visit uh, uh, this thing, uh, visiting lecturers, it must continue because that's how it is all over the world. Yeah. Why are we reluctant to agree to this kind of thing? In any case, we even agreed. But we only agree just so that the lecturers can go back to work. That's we knew. Science. Yes, that's the, that's the thing. Why do, why do you think since 2009, these agreements that we are, f they are fighting over mm. had been there since 2009? Successive Nigerian governments refused to implement. Now they said, okay, if you cannot implement wholesale, let us have renegotiation of the 2009 agreement. Even that renegotiation, you refuse to let happen. The only two issues that you have agreed is the issue of shortfall in salary and visitation panel to federal universities. You know? Mm. So visitation panel. A lot of the universities, uh, the, the president didn't set up visitation panels to them. When the crisis at Unilag happened, mm, they then it. said, ah, why don't you solve this problem? And we use that visitation panel to, yeah, solve, uh -huh, the to solve the problem and, and then other schools too they gave them the uh, visitation uh, panel so those are the two items in the long list of agreements mm -hmm. reached that government has implemented they are just looking at them uh, uh, believing that would look they can't go on strike again because i want to sincerely when you look at the state of federal universities state universities and some people will even tell you that because they don't have their children there. That's why. But I now, uh, I, I will just have to tell those who are, uh, uh, there was a time that we didn't have uh, public, uh, was in a private, private university in Nigeria. And we used to go to school. With just but there was a time we don't have state universities. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that defeats <laughs> that argument. argument. But yeah. what do you think the federal government for dragging to attend to such, look at the analysis that GD has given now. This is uh, actually, thought. some of them were imported after the facts, basically, because what the, what the 2009 agreement stated was more about uh, making sure the universities are centers of excellence. Out of mm. 10 points, I think the lecturers were asking for eight. Mm. They had not to do with their pockets at all. Basically, mm. how things should run and all that. Mm. But what's going on now is more or less turning the universities into a civil service center, mm. applying the same rules. That you work here, you cannot work there. Mm. But you are talking about some of the brightest people in the world are supposed to be in our universities. And for a while they were. Don't forget, it was this country that we have a university, we have a university teaching hospital that the uh, Saudi Arabia royal family would rather come mm. than go elsewhere. It was in this country we yeah. have the first set of aeronautic engineers, mm. even before NASA did their own taboo. We've had in this country a mathematical center. That was so good mm. that Harvard had to start sending people to come and do sabbatical there. We've destroyed 
in the I don't know whether I say go, I don't know whether we are trying to achieve something else. And what is the funniest thing? We keep licensing more universities. Yes. Federal so government keeps it's one of their demands. More universities. It's one of their demands that the proliferation of state universities must stop. And even because universities. some of them are owing as much as five, six months, seven months salary. Why are you setting up universities that you it can't maintain? That. It's one of the demands. So the demands are not simply about yeah, money. Is that the one Some of them have about, nothing to do with money. It's about two out of eight. Yes, so they yeah, have nothing to do with imagine money. Imagine this law now, the new rule, that you cannot teach in one university. That means, I can tell you, nothing less than five, six, seven universities will go under. Because the people that they rely on to keep their, what do they call it, LUC certification, hmm. are visiting <laughs> professors. It is those people with names that they use to get certification from LUC yes. for those courses. Even, even for a lot of our own lecturers back then, yeah. uh, the graduate assistants, visiting professors will come and assess them. Yeah. They will come and assess them, you know, because some of them were actually um, pursuing their PhDs outside of That's their own university yeah, environment. Mm -hmm. So how do you, because I remember some of my lecturers at that time who, who did not have PhDs, they had lecturers from the schools where they were uh, pursuing their PhD. They would come and assess them. Under this kind of regime, it cannot continue, except that person doesn't want to be paid for the services that uh, uh, is rendering. Okay, we have uh, Jennifer Portacourt. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Hello? Yes, you? go ahead. Hello? Hello, I can hear you. Yeah. My name is Igor from Potakot. All right, go ahead, please. I just want to ask one simple question. What about the Jibo, Jibo, Jibo guys? What is happening with them? Yeah, <laughs> there are still... Is, is that all? Two. Two. Are we sure that the president, commander in chief our president, is aware of all this is happening in the north? That's two questions I have for you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We still have more than 100 Chibo guests in captivity. A lot of them have been married out to, they're, they're, they're women to their fighters, mm -hmm. married out to Boko Haram fighters. Some of them would not even wish to come back home anymore. So that one is a fact. Some of them are mothers. They are already mothers. They are married to commanders of Boko Haram. So we have no less than 100 of them still there, unaccounted for as it were. Then the president knows what is going on in the country. There are some interviews that he has granted Recently. that alluded to some things that we thought he was not properly briefed about or that he was not even aware of. So banish, banish that thought that he does not know what's You'll going be on. He's, he's <laughs> immensely, immensely aware of what is going on in the country. Mm. Uh, people should stop Did thinking. Did you that thing before? No, no, no. <laughs> when you see that one, no, 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 no. He knows. He knows. He's, he's he you. knows. He knows what's going on in the country. We is. We may not approve some of his methods, but that's the way he is. Is that where? We can only pray for him that God will give him the wisdom to run the country better. Yeah. That's all. That I we think he needs. He needs that because yes. The, the wisdom of, Prince, uh, of uh, so, King Solomon. Solomon because to run our country better. Yeah, but Solomon had no agenda. So. Mm. The, 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 Yesterday, I just read about um, one of his um, old friends saying that I'm not coming to see you again. That's this is war. I was like, okay, anger. Uh, <laughs> First of all, uh, okay, okay, okay. okay. He 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 was he to the president. He drew a line in the sand. Yeah, he didn't mention any name, yeah, but yeah, well, everybody can guess who he was. Right? <laughs> but the bottom line is that this uh, there's so much frustration in the land. I'm telling you, this Asu crisis should be nipped. But the it last thing we need to oh, we need to. Nigerians need to challenge their leaders. Mm. Nigerians need to call out their leaders. It's not enough for us who are not leaders to be abusing ourselves on social media. At Let's all. use our brains. That's, uh, we have a labor minister. The people should call. This is now. the time yes. to ask the labor minister that look what's going on, Doctor Chris Ngige. If he has to Mr. give Fetus a Yama. time time ceiling mm. within Today. which some of these problems will be solved, let us know. Um, uh, Kiyamo, the former activist, mm -hmm. is in government. Thankfully, they gave him this kind mm -hmm. of ministry. Mm -hmm. What is he doing? Are mm -hmm. they going to 
open their eyes and let us go on, on, strike on another strike. No, 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 no. It's that will not be sensible now. So, so this is a Nigerian should ask them that question. Mm. Now, what are you doing? Asu has uh, already, you know, Asu was sensible. They, they have sense. They didn't say they were calling out strike. Mm. They said they were suspending. Strike. Which mm. means that they don't need uh, to uh, officially inform anybody. anybody before going. You know, the labor law says you must send yes, the yes, uh -huh. yes, so that don't say the yes you must give them yes. time now yes. they can decide that okay tomorrow uh, we'll uh, go. Uh, uh, we'll without go. having to write to their and the, employers and, and all the that. minister of education too must have a kind of input mm. in this um, what's it, uh, 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 Adamu, Adamu. Adamu, Adamu. Mm. do something about the plight of this i know that is all this all these issues we just need to address some of these issues. National University. A lot National of them, as I said earlier, have nothing to do with money. Mm, that's uh, uh -huh. mm. um, 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 They want the IPPIS replaced with University Transparency and Accountability Solution. They took and the software. They yes. developed it. So then um, the issue of um, even renegotiation. Renegotiate and say this is what you can pay. Yeah. But mm. without renegotiating at all, just don't, you just it, left no, the matter like that. No, that's not right. That's I want to thank you, Dan Kai de Balogo, regards to Ariel de Kakanfa. Uh, yeah. as well. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, the master himself, but by the color the editor. I agree to. Yes, he was. Mm. You, now awesome. use, you now use more than a million. <laughs> Pens. <laughs> we have noticed that you use more than a million. Yeah, look, at his, look at his right hand. <laughs> you know, Mel Mascaras. Mel Mascaras, the wrestler, was described as the Mexican with, uh, with, with a million masks. masks. You know, you are a wrestling enthusiast, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we never saw a million masks. WWE. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another exciting episode of the program. And don't forget to join us, Journalist and Lab, on Sunday. That's from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. I'm Ayodemi Uzuba. We'll see you tomorrow, same time. God bless Nigeria.